uh, my name is Gaston Baquet. I'm a second year PhD student in education at the university. And the, um, what I wanted to share with you is things that I've learned from my first year and uh, tell you a little bit of what a PhD looks like uh, on your first year. Um, I will talk about three things that I, I think that are uh, interconnected really, which is um, the importance of finding a research topic that you're truly interested in and passionate about, um, making your effort sustainable, and the fact that doing a PhD is um, moves beyond just studying and uh, reading and writing, but there are some other elements to it that can be, I think, useful to know about. Um, this is the, I think, the, perhaps the foundational point for me that I've learned uh, and that I've shared with other PGRs. Um, this is my second PhD, actually, not, I didn't finish the first one. Um, I started at a different university, I did 18 months and I withdrew from it because the topic that I was researching was something that was more along the lines of what my supervisor wanted to research and not truly what I wanted. And so after 18 months, this actually became unsustainable because I was doing something that I didn't truly believe in and I wasn't fully invested in. Whereas now, after my, my, this, this first year, uh, my PhD is exactly what I want to do. Um, it's, it combines all the elements that I'm interested in and passionate about. And I think finding that with the help of your supervisor is something that will sustain your effort. And it's important to understand that as you come in, you'll have a proposal already. You will have discussed a proposal. You have an idea of your questions. All of that will change and probably you'll find yourself doing something completely different. Um, it's an iterative process. You will revisit your questions, revisit your drafts and proposals. And the key is just to keep narrowing down and finding something that will keep you going and that you see yourself doing not only during your PhD, but afterwards as well. Um, the second element that I think is very important is uh, understanding, and I like to liken doing a PhD as climbing a mountain really, um, because it takes stamina, it takes uh, a sustained level of effort, and, and I will break it down in not something that is sequential, but things that build up on each other. Um, the first one is when you arrive in Glasgow or at the university, you need to get acclimatized to the city, to the university and to the way things work. Even before you start reading and studying and stuff, there are some basic settling in elements that need to be in place. Um, a very important point to sustain your effort, I think is developing uh, working a, a friendly working relationship with your supervisors. It's, these are people you work with for three years. Uh, you'll meet them on a regular basis and finding a way to not only make the relationship work, but as close as possible between teacher and student. Um, it's, a, it's a collaboration really. You know? So this is a, it's a very important point, I think. Um, the third point is to develop uh, a research uh, and reading plan with your supervisors. Uh, you have your relationship and now you develop a plan. You need to know where you need to get to. And uh, it can be very daunting. I think you gave PhDs because they're so research-based. They can be quite daunting. There is no coursework. So you can be a little bit lost and establishing a plan with your supervisors is important. Um, the next point is to follow this plan and you'll receive lots of feedback, lots of comments, and you'll have to address this regularly. Um, so this is part of your part of your work. A next point uh, in relation to sustaining your effort is you are not alone. Um, you are part of a community, but as, as a student, sometimes we don't know um, how to integrate ourselves in it. I think the university does a really good job on keeping us connected. There are like tons of emails inviting people to different activities. And the, I would suggest that you do the utmost to become integrated with the community. Other PGRs attend chat sessions, events like this. Um, be resilient, be um, willing to adapt to changes. Like I said, everything will change um, in relation to what you submit at the beginning and what ends, what you end up really doing. This will change and you'll face difficulties and uh, perhaps lack of enthusiasm. Sometimes I've even wondered, you know, why am I even doing this PhD? Like, but then the effort becomes sustainable as I adapt to these changes. And then you'll find yourself three years later on top of the mountain. 
Otherwise, this will be you after six months. If we don't sustain the effort and we overwork ourselves to death, right? Um, the next important point that I wanted to talk about is balance. This is the, the third point. Um, all of these points that you see on the slide, they seem quite basic um, and even redundant, but they are really basic points that we tend to forget about. Um, one thing about PhDs is because there is no coursework, you don't have to deal with the assignments that come with doing specific modules and uh, doing assignments every three or four months and writing tons of papers. Your work is basically study, read. That is your work. So doing many of these things is actually easier. Um, avoid working on weekends, for instance. Just do your work, organize your work so you have maybe 30, 35 hours of work and study during the week. Then on weekends, you can switch off. Otherwise, you'll find yourself waking up in the middle of a Sunday, thinking about ideas to write on your thesis. Um, ask for help. Uh, the university has, I'm gonna share with you a series of links, but the university has really uh, good supporting student services department. You have your supervisor, you have the student union, you have the uh, PhD society, other student societies that can help and guide you with questions. Even uh, the accommodation unit, for instance, at the university, if you have an emergency with your accommodation, they can help you within in less than 24 hours, they can help you find an emergency solution for housing issues. Um, and things like eating well and exercising, we tend to forget about these things, but they make the quality of your life just better. Um, students tend to forget about eating well, and we just eat often, eat not well, not exercise, and get sucked into the academic work. So these are points that I find important to have a balanced life that you will need for three years. Um, I shared this in the link with you, actually, um, when I finished the presentation. But these are, I think, five um, departments or five areas uh, that you can access if you need support in different things. Uh, the University of Glasgow uh, Student Services, they can support you with um, well-being, with mental health issues, if you're feeling stressed, if you need to see a counselor. Um, I mentioned already the accommodation area. And then you have the societies, you know, societies at the university offer things like um, cultural events, sport events, they have language clubs. If you're interested in geology, archeology, span they have these societies as well. And joining these groups can also be a good support system. So what I like to ask you is, so this is what I presented to you, okay? Um, avoid working on weekends, socializing, eating well, exercising, and keeping a regular schedule. What I like to ask you, and you can share this with me in the chat box if you like, or tell me, are there any other ways in which you uh, deal with stress or in which you can have a good study life balance? Does anybody have any anything that you guys do that you can share with the rest of the group that helps you have a good balance. I can just see a couple of observations people have made in chat around that. Um, and what Zane has mentioned is she's part of the, the PhD society and, you know, keeping up with clubs and, and societies like that is a good way to, to keep in touch with hobbies and for spare time, but also with other people. Second in the recommendation to avoid working on weekends. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I, I work as a tutor at the university and my master's students work on weekends. They have tight deadlines that they need to meet and stuff like that. PhD students don't have that issue. So managing your workload, uh, keeping a regular schedule. For instance, I get up early in the morning and I finish my day at five. After five, I don't do any work. Um, my supervisor is actually really good at that. She will not meet me on any Friday and she will not answer any emails on Saturdays or Sundays. So that also keeps me disciplined because you know? I'm, I'm likely to read just for fun on weekends anyway. Um, some other ideas, dancing, taking a break. Yeah, exactly. Taking breaks before you need them, right? Don't wait until you're completely burned out to take breaks. And going to art gallery, yeah. I I wake up at five every day. 
But that's because I, I enjoy getting up early. I do yoga for two hours and then I start breakfast and I have a slow day and then I study. And then at five, I finish and I spend time with my wife. Okay. A really good piece of advice that I've just put in the chat though, uh, oh. which picks up on what our um, keynote said is there's loads of really good advice here about eating well and sleeping well and doing yoga and all that really great stuff. Don't punish yourself when it doesn't work out. That would be my big piece of advice because then you've not done the thing and you're mad at yourself. So then you've got like two levels of just tomorrow's a fresh day. Start again. Have another go. If like me, you suffer from insomnia, you won't always have a good sleep schedule. Don't hate yourself when it doesn't go well. Um, but you can try again tomorrow. That's my top tip. <laughs> try again tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And there are days when maybe there's a day you just don't want to do any work and that's fine too. You know, like um, you'll find actually that even though it's daunting at the beginning, um, I have found that this is something that I've learned from my two experiences, the 18 months at a different university and here at Glasgow. Actually, the workload is very manageable if you're organized, very manageable. It's not, it, it can be overwhelming if we don't know what we're doing, but with the proper guidance and support, actually, you'll find that after perhaps three months or four months, you'll, you'll find your rhythm and you'll find your legs and it's, it's a very manageable workload. And yeah, don't get lazy, but it's manageable. Um, and this is uh, the last point that I wanted to mention, which is um, doing a PhD is more than just studying. And there are three uh, things, maybe somebody mentioned this earlier, but there are three points that are, I think, very important. When you, if you want to join the uh, university as an academic, most of lecturing jobs come with um, one third teaching, one third supervision, one third researching. So um, being able to develop these skills if you don't have them. For example, I come from a teaching background. I've, I've been a teacher for 20 years, but, and I didn't have a lot of experience researching and writing. And certainly my network was just the people that I knew from my previous jobs. So building a network with other PGRs, uh, with uh, supervisors, with lecturers and academics at the university is very important. Um, the university offers, like I mentioned before, lots of different social events. Um, there's a walk and talk, for example, organized for the PGRs. You meet on Thursdays at 12 and you go walking and just socialize and talk about whatever. Uh, there are these sessions, these events, symposiums, there are chat sessions, there are coffee shops on Wednesdays and so on. So I think this is a, it's an important element of your um, PGR life. Um, a second element that I always, I always mention this, there are ways of sharing your research that don't require you to write a, a full paper. They are um, in the UK and in Europe, there are tons of research blogs uh, where you can submit your work. And it's a really good exercise to get an idea of what it's like to submit, get feedback on your writing, and then improve your academic writing that way with short pieces like 700 words, 1000 words uh, on things that interest you. If anybody's interested after, I, um, I can share some of these uh, blog, uh, research blog websites. And, and the third one is somebody mentioned this in the chat box, but I think if you don't have any teaching experience actually, uh, finding positions as a tutor or internship positions or GTA positions, even in your first year, I've, I've done it on my first year and it's been manageable because a tutor at the university doesn't have many hours a week. Um, GTAs have more hours. And, but after the second year, I think it's probably better you're more settled in. But finding a position that one will insert you into the community and two will give you the experience you need um, in terms of being integrated in the academic life as an academic. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.